Hello and welcome to today's revision session where we're going to look at the particle model of matter which is a topic in GCSE separate science physics. So in today's lesson we're going to start by looking at the particle model. Now the particle model was proposed by John Dalton in 1819 where he proposed that all substances were made from indivisible spheres called particles. Dalton then proposed that all solids had the same formation, all liquids had the same formation and all gases had the same formation of particles and this can, this can explain many material properties easily, which he called the particle model of matter. So Dalton proposed that solids had the following formation. He proposed liquids had this formation, and he proposed that gases have this formation. Now this particle model of matter has many limitations. It doesn't show the forces of attraction between the particles. The particles aren't actually solid spheres of the identical sizes. The particles are in motion and not always stationary, but we can use the particle model to explain many natural phenomena in the world such as density because density is the amount of matter in the substance in a certain volume so density is a measure of the number of particles in a certain volume or a measure of the space between particles in a certain volume or a measure of how spread out the particles are in a certain volume so if an object is very dense there are small gaps on average between the particles in the substance because there are lots of particles per unit volume if an object is not very dense there are large gaps on average between the particles in the substance because there are few particles per unit volume. So density is the mass of a substance in a unit volume, where density is equal to mass over volume, where mass is measured in kilograms, volume is measured in meters cubed, so therefore density is measured in kilograms per meter cubed. And you are expected to memorize this equation for your examination and rearrange this equation for your examination. Now it's important to also note that you can consider density as the mass of one cubic meter of a substance. So if you have a density of 19,000 1,300 kilograms per meters cubed. This means in one meter cubed of the material that will have a mass of 19,300 kilograms. And we can symbolize the equation in the following format. Rho equals m over v. Now please note you can write kilograms per meter cubed or kg m to the minus 3 in either format. Now the unit of density is always written as the unit of the mass divided by the unit of the volume. So if the mass was in grams and the volume is in centimeters cubed, the density unit will be in grams per centimeter meter cubed. So the units of density depend on the units of mass and the units of volume. So if we look at our idea of density in the idea of a very dense object and a not very dense object, this shows the idea that solids have a higher density than liquids and liquids have a higher density than gases since in each case they have more particles per unit volume. So there is a greater space between the particles per unit volume in a gas compared to a solid. And also you can consider the fact that particles are more spread out in a gas per unit volume compared to a solid. So it's the idea that gases are a low density and solids are a high density. Now technically a vacuum has a density of zero kilogram meters cubed because there are no particles in the volume at all on average. So to calculate a density using the equation you would write out the equation density equals mass over volume, substitute the values into the equation and work out your answer with the correct significant figures and units. Now if the shape is regular or symmetrical we can find its volume by using one of the equations you use in mathematics where either volume of a sphere is four pi, so 4 over 3 times by pi times by r cubed, where r is the radius of the object, the volume of the cube is l cubed, where l is the length of the object, and volume of a cylinder is pi times by r squared times by h, where h is the height of the object. Now this shows you how you can answer the question uh, in a examination format, so once again you'd write out your equation, you'd work out your volume with the mathematical equation, substitute it into the density equation and work out your answer to the right significant figures with the units. Now to find the density of different regular objects you've got to carry out the following investigation. So you're going to use a top pan balance, a ruler and materials. So you take a material and place it on the balance, ensure the balance was zero beforehand and measure the mass of the material. Then using a ruler measure the three different heights of the material and calculate the volume with your mathematical equation and use that to calculate the density of the materials. So you get a balance and ensure the balance is zeroed. If the balance reads a non-zero value 
when there's nothing on it has a zero error, which is a systematic error. So to remove a zero error, you either subtract the value from the reading or you reset the balance. Now you would then use a 30 centimeter ruler, which can measure to one millimeter as that's the smallest possible division on the ruler. So it's the resolution of the ruler. So the resolution is the smallest possible value that can be read on a device. Now a high resolution gives you accurate results. So you'd select a symmetrical object from the tray and then what you would do is you place the block on the balance and record the mass and show the balance reads zero before the material is placed on it. Then what you would do is you take the material off the balance and then measure length one with the ruler, measure length two with the ruler and measure length three with the ruler. Now whilst a ruler is a good device to use to measure length there are better devices to use such as a screw gauge micrometer which has a resolution of 0.01 millimeters. So it has a greater resolution and gives you more accurate results and a vernier caliber which can also measure to 0.01 millimeters. So because it has a better resolution it will record your values to more accurate va results. So you take off the balance, you've measured your length ensuring your ruler is aligned so there's no zero error. You can then work out the volume of the material and then do density by the following equations. Volume equals length 1 times by length 2 times by length 3 and then density equals mass over volume. And then the second investigation you can work out the density of different irregularly shaped objects. So you need a top pan balance, a 400 mil beaker, a 100 mil measuring cylinder and some materials. So you take an empty beaker, fill it with water, gently place a piece of material in the water and record the new volume. Then that's the volume after the investigation. Subtract the volume before from the volume after to find the volume of the material. Remove the material from the beaker and place on electronic balance to find the mass of the material and calculate the density where density equals mass over volume. So once again you get a balance, ensure the balance is zeroed. If the balance is reading a non-zero value when there's nothing on it, it has a zero error, a systematic error, which is the, an error of the same value in each measurement taken. So to remove that, you either subtract the re value from the reading or reset the balance. And remember to record your results of the mass to the same resolution the balance used. You get a 400 mil beaker. You then place 200 mils of water from the tap into the beaker, looking straight on when you measure this value. Otherwise, you get a parallax error. So a parallax error is a random error in science as each measurement has a different value of error attached to it. So you can reduce your random error by taking repeats and averaging the values. You retrieve a material, you place the material on the balance and measure its mass. Remember to record the same decimal places as the values given on the balance or the resolution of the balance. Then what you do is you place the material in the beaker of water. That will cause the water level of the beaker to rise. Then you, by doing this, you can then work out the value. Make sure you always look straight on, otherwise you gain a parallax error. So the volume of the material is equal to the final volume minus the starter's volume. Then you can do density equals mass over volume. Now, in the particle model, you should always consider all forms of energy stored in the structure. Now, in the particles of a substance, there are two forms of energy stored present. There, now, this is the case if it's particles, atoms, molecules, whatever. So the first type of energy store is the potential energy store. That is due to the intermolecular forces of attraction between the particles. The second one is the kinetic energy store, due to the movement of the particles in the substance. Now, together, these two forms of energy are referred to as the internal energy of the substance. So internal energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy which is of all of the particles in the substance. So the particles within a system are a kinetic energy store due to the movement of the particles. They're a potential energy store due to the intermolecular forces of attraction between the particles. The sum of all these particle kinetic and potential energies is the body's internal energy. So we can summarize the concept as following. Okay, we can use the particle model to work out the particle structure of a substance. The energy these particles have in total is the internal energy energy of the substance. Part of the internal energy is the kinetic energy of the particles. That is how much the particles vibrate, which we can observe with the temperature of the substance. So increasing the temperature increases the internal energy of, this, of the system because the kinetic energy store has increased, which we achieve by heating a system, by doing work to the object. The other part of the internal energy is the potential energy of the particles. It's how much the particles are attracted to each other. Now the potential energy can be changed by changing the state of the object. So by changing from a solid to a liquid to a gas, that will increase the internal energy of the substance as is increasing the potential energy of the substance. And this is achieved by heating the system, by doing work. So internal energy equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy of all of the particles. So the internal energy of a system can be changed if a change is made to the particle system of an object. So the kinetic energy store can be changed if the temperature is changed. The potential energy store can be changed 
changed if the state of matter is changed. But only one store can be changed at once. They can't be altered simultaneously. So substances can change between different states when their internal energy is changed, either increased or decreased by changing the potential energy store. So an example is ice melting into water, water boiling into steam, water freezing into ice, or a dry ice subliming from a solid to a gas. So we refer to a state of matter change as a physical change because the, the material can recover its original properties if the change is reversed. But like a chemical reaction in a physical change, the overall mass of a substance is conserved. So if you started with 20 kilograms of a solid, that would melt to make 20 kilograms of a liquid, which would boil to produce 20 kilograms of a gas. So that's an important idea. Now this occurs because particles cannot be created, they cannot be destroyed, they can only change formation, which is the conservation of mass. Now we can also consider the different names of the state changes between the different states of matter. So you've got to remember the following ideas. So solid turned into a liquid is called melting, which requires an increase in internal energy because you're putting work into the substance. The substance has to be heated to be melted. So this occurs at the melting point. A liquid turned into a solid is called freezing. This requires a decrease in internal energy. As for freezing to occur, work is taken out the substance, the substance is cooled. But this also occurs at the melting point. A, a liquid turned into a gas is called boiling, which requires an increase in internal energy because the substance is being heated. But that occurs at boiling point. Now, a, a gas turned into a liquid is called condensing, which requires a decrease in internal energy. We know this because the substance is cooled to achieve condensing, but that also occurs at the boiling point. Now, a solid turned into a gas is called sublimation. That requires an increase in internal energy because the substance has to be heated to undergo this process. Now, now, a gas turned into a solid is called deposition, which requires a decrease in internal energy because the substance has to be cooled to take part in this process. Now, previously, we've considered how to calculate the internal energy of an object. So the internal energy equals the kinetic energy of all the particles plus the potential energy of all the particles. The kinetic energy due to the movement, the potential due to the attraction between the particles. Now, we can never calculate the total internal energy in a substance, but we can calculate the change in the internal energy of a substance. Now, the change in the kinetic energy is due to the specific heat capacity of the substance. The change in the potential energy is due to the specific latent heat of the substance. So we're going to look at how you can increase or decrease the internal energy, working out the change in the kinetic energy store or the change in the potential energy store. But these values are then added together to work out the total change in the internal energy uh, of the substance. So to calculate our specific heat capacity. It is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram by one degrees. While specific latent heat is the energy needed to change the state of one kilogram with no temperature change. So when you're changing temperature, you can observe this on a heating curve, and then you can observe the change of state on a heating curve. Now you'll notice the change of temperature, it's a diagonal line upwards, but the change of state is a flat line along your heating curve. So when you're changing temperature, you're changing kinetic energy store. When you are changing a state you are changing potential energy store so either you are changing your specific heat capacity equation or you're changing specific latent heat equation so the equation to calculate the change in the kinetic energy of all the particles is e equals m times by c times by triangle t where triangle t is the change in temperature c is the specific heat capacity in joules per kilogram degree celsius and m is the mass in kilograms we can calculate the change in potential energy by doing e equals m times by l where m M is the mass in kilograms and L is the specific latent heat in joules per kilogram. So the equation on the left is used to work out the energy transferred when the substance changes temperature, which is on the diagonal line of the heating or cooling curve, whilst the equation to work out the energy transferred into or out of the substance when it changes state is the equation on the right hand side, which is represented by a flat line on a heating curve. Now these equations are given to you in your examination on your equation sheet, but it's likely to be asked to rearrange these in your examination. So just to clarify, we can identify the state change or change of temperature from a heating curve. So you can work this out by having a flat line is when you have your change of state and a diagonal line when you have your change in temperature. Now we can work out the energy change when we change in temperature with delta E equals M times by C delta T, whilst we can work out our energy in our change of state by doing delta E equals ML. Now the energy per kilogram needed to change the state from a solid to a liquid or vice versa is called the specific 
kinetic latent heat of fusion, whilst the energy per kilogram needed to change the state from a liquid to a gas, or vice versa, is called the specific latent heat of vaporization. Now, the specific latent heat of vaporization is always larger than the specific latent heat of fusion for a substance. You can tell this from the heating curve because the line is longer for boiling than it is for melting. Now, this is because there's a greater change in the forces of attraction going from a liquid to a gas as opposed from a solid to a liquid. So let's have a look to see how you calculate uh, values using the equations we've just stated. So if you need to calculate the change in the kinetic energy store, which is given by the fact that there's a change in temperature in the substance, you'd write out your equation, you place your values into your equation, you calculate an answer, and you give your answer to the correct of significant figures with units. And it's the same idea here, except remember, if you're given a value 2 in front for temperature, you'd work out your change of temperature. Now, you'd also do the same for when you're changing state, for example, when you're melting. So you'd write out your equation, place the values into the equation, and calculate a final answer, then put a unit on your answer with significant figures. Now, the last thing we need to look at is gas pressure. So to understand gas pressure, you've got to be able to describe what the particle model of gases is showing. So in the particle model of matter, gases can freely move randomly in all directions and have a variety of speeds. Now, because they're freely moving, they have a high kinetic energy store. But because they're so far apart, they have a low force of attraction, so a low potential energy store. So gases have an internal energy made up mostly of kinetic energy and very little potential energy. So gases of, of molecules okay, move in random motion and they have a variety of speeds. So the properties we can measure of a gas are the volume of a gas, the temperature of a gas and the pressure of a gas. So to understand this concept, we've got to consider what's going on in the particle model. So let's consider placing a gas particle in a box when we say it's a closed system. Now it's a closed system because the gas can't escape. Now gases follow different laws in closed systems and open systems, but we'll only consider when gases are trapped in a space, a closed system. So the volume of a gas is the total space that a gas could occupy in theory. So it is not the space of the gas particles, it's the space the gas can fill. So that tells us the volume of a gas is much larger than the volume of the gas particles that make it up, as shown in this particular diagram. Now the temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of a particle. So temperature is linked to the speed of the gas particles. So it's related to the average kinetic energy of the gas particles. So the higher the temperature, the faster the gas particles move on average. The lower the temperature, the slower the gas particles move on average. Now this is an average because gas motion is in random directions. Now we can put work onto a gas, which means by placing energy into the gas, such as by pumping up a gas in an enclosed volume or blowing up a balloon. So if work is done on the gas, this means energy has been given to the gas particles. So the internal energy of the gas particles is increasing. So what this tells us is that as most the internal energy is kinetic energy, the temperature of the gas will increase. Now, pressure is when gas particles collide with the, the walls of the container it is in or the surface of the container. So the pressure is always exerted outwards as the gas particles collide with the inside of the container. So it's better to say that when the gas particles collide, it exerts a force on the container, which produces a pressure. Now, the force will always act at right angles to the container, and it's always outwards from the container it is in. So a force is produced by the gas particle when it collides with the side of the container as it's changing in momentum. So for a gas, temperature is a measure of how fast the gas particles move. It's related to the average kinetic energy of the gas particles. Volume is a measure of the space which gas particles move into, and pressure is a measure of the force exerted at right angles to the container or surface when the gas particles collide with the container or the surface. Now we can link these properties in a closed system under a law called Boyle's Law. So Boyle's Law considers how pressure and volume are related under constant temperature. So if the temperature is constant, it means the molecules move at a fixed constant speed. So if we increase the size of the box, it makes fewer collisions in the same time because it has to travel further before it collides with the side. So the bigger the box, the fewer collisions, as the gas particles have to travel further at the same speed to hit the side. So increasing the volume decreases the pressure of the gas. And by that same logic, if we make the box smaller, the molecules will collide with the box more often since it has less distance to travel. So as the particles have a shorter distance to travel at the same speed, they'll hit the side more 
often. So decreasing the volume increases the pressure of a gas, which can be quite um, dangerous because increasing the pressure of a gas could cause a container to explode or to break. So it tells us that pressure and volume are inversely proportional to each other. So that tells us that for when the temperature is kept constant, pressure and temperature are inversely related. Now we can actually write this down mathematically by saying pressure of a gas times by volume of the gas equals a constant because when two factors are inversely proportional we represent that by saying factor one times by factor two is equal to a constant. So a constant is just a non-zero value which stays the same for a gas throughout any investigation. Now you'll be expected to use this equation in your examination to work out values when one factor changes but you are given in this equation your examination. Now I like to write this equation by writing pressure before times by volume before is equal to pressure after times by volume after because pressure times by volume for a gas under any situation gives the same value because it's a constant. So in an examination question you'll be given three variables and asked to work out the fourth one. So for example you might be given the pressure and volume before and the pressure afterwards and asked to work out the volume afterwards. So what you do is you write out your equation you substitute the values into your equation, you'd make the one to value the subject of your equation, you then calculate your final answer with the correct significant figures and a unit. So in a closed system, the gases follow Boyle's law. So when the temperature is kept constant, the volume and gas are pressure are inversely proportional. So increasing the volume decreases the pressure as the pressure as the particles collide less times with the container per second as they have further to travel. And we can show this in an equation by saying pressure times by volume equals a constant. Now we can consider what's happening when we keep the volume the same size. So in this instance the box will have a fixed size so we can use the particle model to find the relationship between the temperature of a gas and the pressure exerted. So if we keep our box, our container the same size, if we increase the temperature we will increase the average speed of the particles in the gas. So this means it will hit the side of the container more often so more collisions per second increase the pressure of a gas. And remember high pressure can cause the container to explode or to break. If we decrease the temperature, it tells us that it'll hit the sides less often. So less collisions give a lower pressure exerted by the gas. So this tells us as temperature increases, pressure increases. So the relationship is in direct proportion because when temperature decreases, pressure decreases. Well, that's only actually one reason why we see this relationship because there's a second reason. Because if you increase the temperature, the particle is moving faster, which gives more collisions per second, but will also hit the side with a greater force. So more forceful collisions will also give a greater pressure, which is dangerous because a high pressure can cause the container to explode or to break. So if, if the particle moves slower at a lower temperature, it will give less collisions, but will also give collisions which have less force attached to them. So less forceful collisions give a lower pressure. So as the temperature increases, the pressure increases. It's a directly proportional relationship and as temperature decreases pressure decreases and there are two reasons as to why this is observed now if we do a graph of pressure against temperature you will get a straight line through the origin because pressure and temperature are directly proportional to each other now in a closed system when a volume is kept constant the temperature and pressure are directly proportional because increasing the temperature increases the pressure as there are more collisions and more forceful collisions per second now what happens when work is done onto a gas so to do work onto a gas means to place energy into the gas. You can do this by pumping up, a uh, or pumping up the gas. This increases the internal energy of the gas because it has more energy in general. Now as most of the gas's internal energy is the kinetic energy store, the temperature of the gas increases. So as the pressure increases, the, t the, the increase with temperature, if the temperature is going up, the pressure is going up. So if too much work is done to a gas, the pressure increases so much so it can cause the container to break, which is why a balloon bursts if you blow it up too much. So doing work on a gas increases the internal energy of a gas and can cause an increase in the temperature of the gas. Increasing the temperature of the gas increases the pressure of the gas. So if too much work is done on a gas, the pressure increases so much so it can cause the container to break, which is why a balloon will burst if you blow it up too much. So what do we need to know in this particular course? For this particular module, we need to know that density is equal to mass divided by volume and 
can use the particle model of matter to explain the different states of matter and the difference in densities and draw and recognize simple diagrams to model the differences between solids, liquids and gases. You should be able to use appropriate apparatus to make and record measurements to determine the densities of regular and irregular shaped objects. That should also include a volume being determined from dimensions of regularly shaped objects and by the displacement technique for irregularly shaped objects and you can use the appropriate apparatus such as a ruler, a micrometer or vernier calipers. You should know that the energy is stored inside a system by the particles and it's called the internal energy and it's the total kinetic energy and potential energy of all the particles that make up the system. Heat and changes the energy store within the system by increasing the energy the particles that make up the system. This will either cause the temperature of the system to rise or could produce a change of state. Now you should be able to describe how when substances change states they melt, they freeze, they boil, they condense, they sublimate, their mass is conserved but these changes of states are physical changes which differ from chemical changes because when the material recovers its original properties if the change is reversed. Now if the temperature of a system increases this increase in temperature depends on the mass of the substance, the type of material and the energy inputted into the system. So E will equal M times by C times by delta T where delta T is the change in temperature. Now the specific heat capacity C of a substance is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. The specific latent heat of a substance is the amount of energy required to change the state of one kilogram of the substance with no change in temperature. So you should be able to use the equation E equals ML and no L, the specific latent heat can be infusion, the change of state from a solid to a liquid, or vaporization, the change of state from a liquid to a vapor. Now molecules of a gas are in constant random motion and the temperature of the gas is related to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Now changing the temperature of a gas at a constant volume changes the pressure exerted by the gas and you should be able to explain how the motion of the molecules in a gas is related to, to both its temperature and its pressure and explain qualitatively the relationship between the temperature of a gas and its pressure at a constant volume. Now a gas can be compressed or expanded by pressure changes and the pressure produces a net force at right angles to the wall of the gas container. You can then use the particle model to explain how increasing the volume in which the gas is contained at a constant temperature can lead to a decrease of pressure which is given by the equation pressure times by volume equals a constant. So you're able to calculate the change in the pressure of a gas or the volume of the gas when either the pressure of the volume is increased or decreased. And finally you should know the work is the transfer of energy by a force and doing work on a gas increases the internal energy of a gas and can cause an increase in the temperature of a gas and explain how in given situations such as a bicycle pump doing work on an enclosed gas can lead to an increase in the temperature of the gas. So we've covered all the topics there in the particle model of matter to, uh, module in GCSE separate science physics. I hope you enjoyed this revision session on the particle model of matter and have a lovely day.